go. Welcome, this is the VR Master League, and we're going to be joining a game in progress between Catgirls and Phoenix. I'm Pinch Nerve, and I'm here with Offbeat, controlling the cameras and co-casting. And they've already had the neutral joust. It's over to Monster, Monster to, sni to s s Sniper, and in the goal for two points, and Phoenix is on the board. Yeah, solid start for Phoenix, and a quick reminder for any of you, if you are being cast, you should, of course, always, always wait for your casters to let you know that it is time to ready up. As is, we're able to jump in and get going, no worries. And there is, of course, a prediction pull up, uh, so have some fun with that, as you will. Uh, Catgirls now with the disc, moving up, looking to see if they can get a counterattack. Nope, not gonna happen there. Quick turnover, and good chance at an open goal if they're able to control this disc here. Not able to get off in time, they will slow it up and send it back for a reset as Phoenix setting up with the offense. It is over to Monster, but a steal by Shining Dragon. Oh, what a pretty grab. Gonna pass that down and across to Blade. Blade's gonna end that center, but no, it's picked off by Grumpius Broom. Tries to send it across, but the geometry gets in the way. Shining Dragon is able to grab that, sends it through the right tunnel, where A is waiting for it. Takes that long shot, but just wide of the goal. That's okay, Nero's gonna try. Oh, and another miss. And Grumpius Broom is gonna grab that and send it back through the mid. Yeah, good chance for Catgirls, but not able to capitalize a few chances at that open goal. None of them able to connect, and now as a result, Phoenix back the other way. They're in the bubble with numbers. That's Monster with some space and with a nice, easy two points. Phoenix, double score lead now, 4-0. Wow, and you know, I want to make some pun with the name, but that was most certainly not a monster shot. And I do believe we have a timeout. Yes, we do. That was Catgirls calling a timeout, and one of their players dropped. Yeah, uh, it does look like it. A very possible early uh, connection issue. Sometimes that happens, and they'll, you know, they'll use it now uh, to, you know, try and uh, get things get things figured out. Uh, so, here, we'll get our faces in here for a bit. Hey, everyone, how's it going? Uh, I guess we can do the introductions that we weren't able to do before. Uh, offbeat here, running, uh, running the cans for you and the co-cast, and of course... Pinch Nerve here, uh, running, leading the show here tonight, as we've got a nice set of three games coming up for you here tonight. Uh, should be a, should be a good, exciting evening. We'll be with you here for about the next hour and a half. Oh, yeah. We have an incredible set of games. Hey, we have Cat Girls and Phoenix to start us off with. This is a cast my match. Next, we're going to have Shockers and Night Shift, which is also a cast my match. And to wrap up the evening, we're going to have T 2 t versus the Echoholics. So it will absolutely be a great evening. And you know what? While we have this pause, I'll introduce the players. For the Cat Girls on the orange side is Blade the Int, Nero, Shining Dragon, eh? And on Phoenix for Blue, it is Vacant, Monster, Sniper, and Grumpiest Broom. And I don't know about what kind of brooms he has, but mine aren't grumpy. Uh, then, then you're missing out. Grumpiest br brooms are usually the best quality. Uh, A, leaving coming back a couple times, uh, very potentially, uh, trying to figure out a setup that works, but you know, you, they've only got a limited time here. They still got another, you know, another four minutes they can tack on. It does suck having to use your timeout this early, though, uh, because that is something that can definitely be useful, uh, getting on into the game, especially, you know, it looks like they're going to be in tough here against Phoenix, who's starting out with a quick two-score lead, and, you know, so Catgirls definitely... They're not going to be the ones running away with this, very likely. At least not right out of the gate, so you know that timeout could have been very uh, potentially useful down the road. You know, it could have been, but you have it. A lot of times you just never use it, so, hey, it, it doesn't hurt, you know. I mean, we'll, we'll find out, you know, if the, we come out a little later on, they're having issues with connectivity or whatever. Uh, then it could be one of those, oh, I wish we had the timeout. But, you know, just so everyone knows, each team gets a five-minute timeout per match. Y'all can use that whenever you want throughout the match for whatever reason. You could use it for technical issues, like apparently A is, or you could use it because you have to go to the bathroom or you want to drink or you just want to discuss strategy. That is in addition to each team being allowed to extend the one minute pause between rounds by an additional four minutes for a total of five minutes. So there, there, you, there are little rules involving pin caps and pulling moderators into the game to extend that five minutes, um, but we're not going to get into all that here. Yeah, 
So let's give you some context for the teams that are playing here, right? Catgirls Phoenix, they're not names you might necessarily know, uh, but they are at that Diamond 1 rank, right? They're, they're those who have, you know, in the, in the previous iteration of Master would have been, you know, on the cusp of kind of looking to break into that. And uh, we've seen Catgirls here before. They've had a couple of Cast My Match Redemptions coming in. Uh, but Catgirls really are the ones to keep an eye on here because Catgirls are coming into this. They have played uh, currently seven matches on the season already, have only lost one of them. Uh, and that one coming, you know, back in their first week. So they're on a really, really good roll here, kind of, you know, shooting up those standings. Uh, keep a close eye on them. And then on the other side of it, uh, we have Phoenix Phoenix with a few fewer games under the belt. They haven't been using their challenge matches. Uh, they've got themselves, you know, in a little bit of a more back and forth here. They, they, they're they a three and two team at the moment, uh, having come off of a very, very close loss uh, to Bamboo earlier this week, by which I mean, of course, yesterday, that being in three rounds. So very much looking to see if they can't uh, bounce back here with a win and show that they still kind of deserve to have that, you know, diamond, uh, that diamond ranking that they have earned for themselves uh, by this early stage in the season. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Phoenix has been around for a long time. They've been around since season two. So, you know, this is a team with a legacy. Well, we'll see what happens because it looks like A is back. And hopefully, let's see, their, their ping looks pretty good, actually, around 40 milliseconds. And I do hear that they released the Nine, pause. Eight, so it will be seven, an offensive joust six, for the five, Catgirls. Four, and it will. There's the disc. There's the tunnels, and here come the Catgirls! Meow! They send it up through that right tunnel just out of the reach of Shining Dragon. It is going to bounce up into open space, and Phoenix is there to recover with some space, so not the opening joust the Catgirls were looking for, as uh, they do kind of give it right into the hands of their opponents, but fortunately some good backstacks uh, will prevent any quick counterattacks here as it floats near the midfield. And it is going to be anyone's disc. It's going to be slapped around. Monster is able to grab it. Nice pass over to Sniper. Sniper approaching the cold, but it goes back. It's a reset to Vacant. Vacant's going to send it forward over to... Oh, Monster was not able to catch it. Vacant is able to recover it once again. They're going to slow it down, take their time at the top there. Send that down to the grumpiest broom. But stolen away and knocked free. Who gets it? It is Shining Dragon. Oh, but not able to keep it. It's stolen away by Monster. Monster bringing it back into the bubble to Sniper. Sniper back to Vacant. Vacant over to grumpiest Two broom. Points. And in the goal, Phoenix is up Get by six points. Some very, very pretty passing. Uh, I might uh, wager to say uh, a bit more passing than they really needed to have on that one as uh, a couple good chances that they decided, you know, elected not to take. But hey, uh, as long as it goes in at the end of the day, you're not super concerned. Uh, and as a result, they've got themselves this six point lead here and Catgirls really kind of have been struggling to get set up in the zone here. They connect on their first pass, which is really important and are now able to move it up into the zone. Nero gonna reset this one back. Uh, and that's A with the disc up high, looking down, has an open teammate, as Catgirls kind of slowly work this one up into the zone. Open target up high, bounce off the ceiling, very nice to A, A looking for the pass, but Sniper reads that! Sniper with the steal and the clear! And here come those stacks, it is Sniper able to grab it and put it in the goal almost instantly! And now Phoenix is up by eight points, and we have over six minutes remaining. Certainly Nine, plenty of time for the eight, cat girls to recover seven, here. They only need to score six, three times, five, but four, they do need three, to score three two, times. And five, out of the tubes they come. That disc is grabbed by A. A is going to send it across to the it's right over to Shining down, Dragon. Please. Shining Dragon back to A. And A down across the floor to Nero. Nero is going to send it across. Oh, but it does not connect. It is anyone's disc. It's A's disc. A is going to grab that, pass it across. Ooh, geometry gets in the way, but Nero is able to grab it, but away. stolen away. Oh, wait, Shining Dragon gets it right back. A pass over to A. A approaching that bubble slowly. Going to reset it back to Nero. And Nero just taking their time in the back there, looking for those lanes, dodging the defense. It's going to be a pass over to Shining Dragon. And Shining Dragon now bringing it in slowly, taking their time. It's a pass that didn't go quite where intended, but it is able to be recovered by Nero. But, oh, Vacant is able to grab it and clears it out through the left tunnel. Yeah, Catgirls really just kind of looking, seemingly <laughs> seemingly being a little too picky there. Uh, trying to, you know, line up what would be the perfect opportunity. 
Uh, but at the end, you know, they, they have a miscommunication, miss the pass, and looking for that perfect opportunity doesn't pan out if you don't get any opportunity at the end of the day. They've got the disc back, but we are halfway through this round, and with only five minutes uh, left on the clock, uh, time ticking away for them. They're holding on to possession for now, but not for long. Vacant's gonna have some time to pick this one up. A reset back to the goal, and grumpiest room gonna get this one cleared up. Uh, not out, but no worries. There's a teammate there to finish the job. Vacant gets the clear. And it is Sniper just inside the zone. Long pass into the bubble, but it's not connecting. It's Shining Dragon able to grab that. Sends that out near the right tunnel, but not all the way through. A is able to grab it. Sends it the rest of the way through the uh, midfield. And there is Nero just outside the bubble looking for a shot. Off the backboard. Oh, off the ding ring. And Grumpiest Broom is able to clear that out through the right zone. And here are the stacks. It's Sniper. And ooh, just wide of the goal. But Vacant is there and puts it in the rest of the Get way phoenix is now up by 10 points yeah 10 well, point lead and it, we've seen a couple 10, of these now nine, where the trend really eight, has been um seven, it's seven, been cat girls five, with some time and opportunity four, to set something up three, not able to capitalize it and then quick turnaround points back the other way for Phoenix. Uh, they're going to have to either, you know, start figuring out how to get back on defense a little quicker or <laughs> not, uh, not have trouble scoring it. You know, if you score it, then the other team doesn't get a chance to counterattack. But as of right now, uh, that's not clicking yet. The three is just going to miss. Dinging off of the goal here and bouncing all the way out nearly back to Nero. But no, that is going to get reset as Phoenix with the disc and with some time. Looking for the cross. A is there and A shuts the door with the intercept and the steal. And it is going to bounce around in that right, or excuse me, left trap area, but picked off by Grumpiest Broom and sent back to Vacant in the bubble. You always get nervous when you reset back to your own goal. I, it just it just makes me nervous. One little miss and oops, you know, it's Sniper going to send that through the right tunnel or left tunnel over to Monster. Monster going for that long three-point shot, but it is well wide of the goal and able to, A is able to grab it. And he's kind of drawing out that uh, defender there. He's going to stand across, but picked off by Vacant and sent back into the bubble where Shining Dragon picks it off once again. It's going to be a pass over to Nero. Nero inverts and sends it back over to Blade. Blade back to Nero. And Blade, or excuse me, Nero is going to send that down across the floor and almost into the bubble. Yeah, it's going to be right there on the cusp where A picks it up. They've got the numbers advantage, taking the shot. A, uh, learning from the mistakes of the past, not taking too long uh, to get this one, you know, set up and look for something perfect. There was enough of an opportunity. A takes it in. A gets the points. It took us almost eight minutes, but Cat Girls have finally found their way onto the board here and have dropped that lead to eight. Uh, and uh, in, in good enough time uh, where, where they could still make something of it. Yes, but right now it is Phoenix with the disc. Gets over to Monster. Monster is going to send it into the bubble. Not controlling it. Blade is able to grab it. It's going to send it out. But no, Monster grabs it and puts it in the goal. Extending the Phoenix lead to 10 points. And we are running out of time. We have less than two minutes remaining. Yeah, right now... Look, Cat Girls, they're starting to tighten things up on offense, starting to get things figured out, but unfortunately, that's not helping them on the defensive side too much, as uh, Phoenix has been kind of near flawless in that offensive zone. I mean, the 12 points don't really speak to the quality of how their offense is done, because they haven't had the disc all that often. Uh, Cat Girls use a lot of that time of possession with the disc, and uh, Shot Company is going to miss. Second attempt will connect as uh, Nero puts this one in, as Cat Girls finally getting this to work. But to finish the point, uh, Phoenix just being really, really efficient when they do have the disc and uh the the 12 points are really about all you could ask for uh given you know the amount of time they've had the disc absolutely but we have a phoenix offensive joust it is vacant with the disc ending across to the left over to monster monster is going to relay it across oh but it's going to be picked off by shining dragon going to send that into the goal three points and cat girls is shrinking that lead they are only two scores behind and it is absolutely doable Wow, what a shot. 44 meters out. Very, very impressive. It is still too little too late, but hey, watch out because uh, Cat Girls, uh, you know, feeling a little slow coming out the gate here, have started to put a few of the pieces together. So watch out for them coming out here in the second round as Vacant is going to kill some time. As all the Phoenix has decided, we're going to keep this one our own zone, move it around, keep that stack busy, and uh, not move it forward until we have to burn off a lot of that clock. And Sniper now with the disc with some space. Oh, with a nice little juke hitting the brakes. Finding Vacant and Vacant finding the goal. 
and managing even to stun Blade on the way in, as uh, that's gonna do it. 14-7 is the final here in round one. Yes, it is, and that was an incredible round one, and I do believe it was an unexpected round one. Uh, it looks like Cat Girls just had a slow start, and for some reason, just they weren't quite there till the very end of the round, but that says great things for the second round because we might have a much more competitive game in this second round. I should hope so, uh, considering I think uh, chat would really like that. 58% of the channel points going to cat girls. Uh, at least they're the, the cat girl fans are at least the mo most vocal ones uh, in the chat here so far. But hey, uh, some Phoenix believers definitely at the moment standing uh, to profit a little bit off of their hard earned channel points. Uh, it's been a it's been a very interesting game. The tale of two halves, I, I think, right? First half of that round, definitely all Phoenix. Uh, second half, Cat Girls really starting to come together and make it closer. I'm pretty sure if we looked at the numbers, uh, we would see that Cat Girls did, in fact, outscore Phoenix in the second half of that round, uh, which which sets a really interesting thing. You know, are we going to see the same pattern in this next game, or are Cat Girls going to be able to keep going with this and you know have a solid round two and push us into a round three? Oh, absolutely. We're going to get that round three. I have no doubt simply because that's what I want. I mean, I want round three. I want this to go on all night long because I love these games and I love teams that are competitive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, stats, uh, we were going to touch them a little, but kind of across the board, Phoenix running a very, very good, uh, you know, balanced attack here. Everyone really getting involved there, but here we are underway. Round two. Cat girls are going to get to that disc first as uh, teams collide there in the middle, and everyone looking for that loose disc. It is going to be Monster getting out of there with it and setting a nice self-pass off there as Phoenix moving quick, not going to connect on that pass, but still in a dangerous spot. Good thing Blade is back with the stacks, but no, no, Blade! You've passed it to the wrong team, and Snipe Sniper will make no mistake there. Two score lead, two point lead rather for Phoenix. Oh, that really hurts to make that incredible save. Get there first, throw it out of the bubble, and oh, the wrong player is there to grab it. That's okay though. Cat girls are on the ball here, and playing with that ball of yarn. And out of the tubes they come. It's gonna be grabbed by A. And A is gonna take their time, send it across to the right. Ooh, and finally does make its way to Blade. Blade takes the long three-point shot, and the Cat Girls have taken their first lead of this match. Yeah, that was an exceptional pass there. Off, it has to have been intended uh, because there really was no one there on the Catgirl side to receive that uh, except for the bounce. So very, very nice setup there. And Catgirls find themselves with their first lead of the game here as Phoenix uh, with the joust here trying to see if they can't steal back some of that momentum that was all in their favor in the early stages of that first round. And it is a pass up to Grumpiest Broom. Grumpiest Broom over to Monster and then all the way across to Sniper. Sniper up to Vacant. Lot of pretty passing going on over to Sniper. Oh, stolen away by A. And A is going to go for that long shot. No, the geometry gets in the way. And who gets the disc first? It is Nero. Got, getting rid of that disc just in time. A is able to grab it. A lot of dancing around to get out of the way. But Sniper is still able to grab that disc before it gets into the goal. It's going to clear it. But no, the geometry is in the way. A gets the disc back. Doesn't hold on. It's back to Shining Dragon. Shining Dragon dancing along that floor. Going to reset it back. But oh, the geometry's in the way. Well, that's okay. We'll try again. Back to Nero. Nero's going to pass it down. But oh, yes. A does have it. A takes the shot. But a beautiful save by Vacant. Clearing it out of the bubble. Yeah, and Vacant will get it cleared as they look to turn it here. We saw so many of these Phoenix, you know, counterattack points, and they're in position for a couple more. Look at it. It's an off-angle shot. The grumpiest broom is up to the task. Hits the three from the off-angle, and Phoenix back in the lead with a three of their own. Yeah, he most certainly swept that right in the goal. Sorry, had to go there. But we're going to have an offensive joust by the Cat Girls. And out of the tubes they come. That disc is grabbed by A. A is going to send it over to the right. And, ooh, it, it's not caught. It's going to be a bounce. It's Chase. It's Sniper with the disc. Sniper is going to try to get... Yeah, Sniper is stunned out. Shining Dragon has the disc. Shining Dragon is going to send it the rest of the way through the tunnel. But there's nobody there except for Vacant. Oh, there's the stacks. It's Nero. Nero's going in the bubble. Takes the shot. But... No, it is not in. All of Phoenix is back there in the bubble, and the stacks are flying out to get to that disc. Ooh, a little overshoot there, and Nero is able to grab it. Oh, no. It's going to get sent back into the bubble. It's Shining Dragon clearing it out. No, Grumpiest Broom takes the three points. 
and they're Get now up watchers. by five. Yeah, couple of failed clears, not quite connecting as Catgirl's uh, another turnover here. Uh, Porcupine and Breeze, thank you so much. Uh, glad you're here, glad you're enjoying the stream. We're having a lot of fun bringing it to you. As Catgirls find themselves down five here after a couple of quick Phoenix scores here and need to turn it around. That <laughs> that rollout isn't what they were looking for, uh, but somehow it all comes together in the end. They maintain possession, are moving it quickly up here. Nice little duck by Nero. Nero is gonna send this one across. Blade coming in as a, oh, what excellent solid disc movement. And that is points back the other way for Catgirls. Uh, bringing this back to a one-score game. 12, 11, they are only 10, down by three. We have six nine, minutes eight, remaining. Seven, we have all the time six, in the world. Five, but it is now a Phoenix three, offensive two, joust. And out of the tubes they come. It's going to be grabbed by and Vacant, sending it across to the left. Blue Sniper is going to take, take it, way. pass it over to Monster. And Monster to Grumpiest Broom. Grumpiest Broom does have a little pressure there. Going to reset that, send it all the way back. Ooh, is somebody there? Yes, it is Sniper. Sniper's going to pass it across to Vacant. Vacant over to Monster. Monster getting into that bubble. Oh, what a save by Nero out of the bubble. And it ends up in the Shining Dragon who clears it all the way out. Yep, all the way out. Excellent job, but no stacks there. The stack doing an excellent job of getting back for Phoenix uh, on the defensive side of that one. And just like that, back the other way, just like they never left it. Phoenix back in the offensive zone as Monster going to send this across. Looking for Vacant, isn't going to connect. And that floating disc is going to be loose up high. Picked up in a dangerous location. Got to get this one out. Catgirls have done a decent job on defense of kind of getting these initial stops. But it's been the clears afterwards that they've given them trouble. But not this side. They've got it cleared in the hands of Blade. Blade taking the long shot. Not going to connect. Is there a chance? No. The rebound is going to go just wide of the outstretched arms of the Catgirls. And Sniper clearing it back out. And cleared it out through that left tunnel. And here come those stacks. Ooh, all of them overshoot, are not able to reach it. Shining Dragon does grab the disc and send it up into that mid area. A is able to clear it the rest of the way through. And once again, here come the stacks. It's Grumpiest Broom able to grab that disc with a stack partner. And Vacant Grumpiest Broom can send it across, but picked off by A. And A is going to send that down. It's a nice pass to Nero. Nero over to Blade. Blade looking. Look, pass. A shot. Two points. And the Cat Girls are only down by one point. Oh, uh, man. For all the flaws we've talked about the cat girls, you know, in their in their play so far today, the one thing you cannot deny is when they are when their passing game is clicking, it is on point. Some excellent, excellent disc moving around the bubble, keeping the defense completely off guard, and setting up what really are some easy scores at the end of the day. Uh, mainly because they've given the goalie whiplash. As uh, another turnover here is going to be costly because that's going to get reset back to vacant and Phoenix with a one point lead here and. Uh, 3.30 on the clock are going to move this one up, see if they can't extend that lead a little further. And that is Grumpiest Groom trying to pass that to Monster. Monster resetting it back to Vacant. Vacant bringing it closer into Sniper. Sniper coming across over to Grumpiest Broom. Oh, Grumpy gets uh, stunned out, and Shining's able to pass that over to A. A is going to clear it completely out of the zone. Who grabs it first? Oh, it is Phoenix able to slap that back, but A is right there. Going to grab that disc and bring it forward again over to Shining Dragon. Shining Dragon's going to pass it all the way down, but not connected, and that is a free-for-all on the disc. It is Grumpy able to grab it. Grumpy's going to send it across, not all the way, and A is able to grab it, sends it back toward the goal and the goal and the cat girls have taken the lead my goodness i want to check the stats a with so many scores here this round i want to see i want to say uh one second as i want to i do want to check this i feel like we've had a couple coming in from a yeah a with the last three goals here so far uh incredible incredible effort here as cat girls find themselves back in the lead having closed that gap and surpassed it Three quarters of the way here through the second round. They are thirsty for a third. It is Monster coming through that right tunnel. A nice pass over to Sniper. Sniper resetting it back to Vacant. And a pass all the way across to Grumpiest Broom. Grumpy's going to send that over to Sniper. Sniper on the edge of the bubble. Loses the disc. And it's going to be grabbed by Shining Dragon. Going to send it out through that left tunnel. And here come the stacks. And here they come quick. But nobody's able to grab it except for Monster. Going to send that back through the left tunnel. Right over the head of oh, Nero and up oh, back and forth. Oh, what a save really by away. Shining Dragon. Wow, but Monster's there. No, it's back and forth. It is finally cleared out by Shining Dragon. Wow, that was incredible. 
three things in that stretch that I would count as saves, even if the game doesn't. Wow, cat girls uh, getting their paws on any everything just before going in and holding on to that narrow two point lead. Uh, but they're not out of it yet because Phoenix still got the disc and they've been known to move it down the arena very, very quickly. And here they are indeed as Grumpiest up above looking. Got a pass option. There's Vacant. Oh, Vacant coming in. Oh, oh it'll no. glance off the head of Nero, but it's get not enough. Watch. And we are locked up at 10. Oh, are we going to get that overtime? Well, we'll find out in about one minute and 10 seconds. But right now, it is a Cat Girls offensive joust. They'll have the disc. They'll have the opportunity. And out of the tubes, they come. It is A with the disc. Going to send it to the left. Over to Blade. Blade's going to send it all the way across to Shining Dragon. Shining Dragon back over to Blade. Blade's going to send it into the zone where A is waiting. A does have a teammate there. Just a goalie. Two points. And the Cat Girls are now up Get by two. Is it A again? It is A again. It's always A. Uh, the Canadian coming in clutch here, uh, giving the team a two-point lead with only 30 seconds left on the clock, which means we're only gonna have time for one more score here. Can Phoenix put it together? They certainly have the time for it, and they've shown themselves able. So here they come up the tunnel. It's going to be sent across down into the trench. Grumpiest broom with some space. Going to look to set this one up, and it's back across here to Sniper. Sniper with the disc. Back to Grumpiest room, looking for that opening. There's an open target on the cross post, but is there a lane for the pass? There is, because there it is, cutting in. Or a locked up at 12. Who wants some overtime? Well, you don't get choice. We're going there. Whoa, what a last second score to push us into overtime. Oh, this has been an incredible round. But now it is a neutral joust. It is anybody's team, anybody's score. The score might as well be 0-0. Zero, zero. It's and the first team off. that touches that disc is Phoenix. Going to knock it out. It's going to be grabbed by Monster. Monster is going to send it into the bubble, but not in the goal. Who gets there first? It is Sniper. Sniper on that edge. No, A. And A is going to clear it out, but it's not all the way. Field. Yeah, cleared up to the mid, though, because they're Shining Dragon. Shining Dragon looking for that mail slot. Oh, just going to glance off. But that's still in the dangerous spot in the bubble. No worries. Grumpiest Broom is back. Uh, to pick that one up, looks, takes some time, looks for the clear, and oh, just out of the reach of the defender back there waiting, and this is where we've seen them so dangerous on these quick counter attacks. No, A is there to shut it down, and the entirety of the other team of Phoenix is in that one spot, very dangerous position, but they are able to get back. We are nearly halfway through overtime here. A with a turnover could be potentially dangerous, but no, loses it right back to vacant, is into the, into the cat girl zone, it goes, here's Phoenix, Phoenix! Not to be denied, gonna take this one in two rounds. This one in overtime. What a close one, but we are done here. Phoenix taking it in two. Wow, this was great. Hey, Cat Girls and Phoenix, thank you so much. This has been an incredible game. However, we have more. That's right, we have two more games. So don't go away. I'm Pinch Nerve. I'm here with Offbeat doing all the incredible work with the cameras. And we'll be right back.
everyone how are you doing pinched i am doing great and we have a second match what who who scheduled yes. that who who made that happen how does that hey. how does that happen we don't ever have second matches here we absolutely do hey we have shockers <laughs> and night shift this is a cast my match just like the previous match this is a cast my cast my match and for those who don't know you're collecting channel points while you're watching the stream. You collect 15,000 channel points. You can use them to redeem a cast my match. And that tells the, the casting teams, hey, cast my match and make it a priority. And we will. But yeah. for this match, we have Shockers on Orange, Pure Cosmo, triple, Trippy, Lucius, Dragoon Ooh, Paladin. Ready. And on the blue side, we have Night Shift, Octothorpe, Jinix. True, Scorpion Lance, and we are readied up. Yeah, uh, probably one of the quickest turnarounds in VRML history, making waves here in Season 7. Shockers, Night Shift, here we go, they're out of the tunnels, we're underway, and Shockers uh, with the disc without a ton of competition for it. I'm sure they won't complain though. Lucius with it, moving up, there's some open space, there's a target, Pure Cosmo, open behind the goal is Dragoon, but Dragoon not able to connect to the pass unfortunately, uh, sending them a little away from the goal, making that angle a little tougher, and oh, even gonna be turned over as Jinx uh, with an attempt, not quite gonna get it cleared, uh, but enough so at least that Shockers need to slow down and uh, approach it again here as uh, Cosmo is gonna reset this back. And it is over to Lucius. Lucius is going to pass over to Trippy. Trippy back. Oh, but it doesn't connect. And that disc is floating free. It's anyone's disc. I hear some stunning, but Lucius is able to grab it. Lucius sends it into the bubble where Trippy is waiting. Trippy tries to send it back. Oh, Pure Cosmo is able to grab it finally. And Pure is going to kind of slow this down. Nice pass across the ceiling to Lucius. Lucius is going to bring it down over to the shield area. Oh, and I did not expect that shot. And Shockers are on the board. Yeah, that is what comes from good team communication. Because coming out there, uh, getting the stun literally as the disc was approaching the goal. Expert timing by the Shockers doing a good job to make sure that that lined up. And they are rewarded with two points for their efforts. And now the onus is all on Night Shift to see if they can't equal the score. <laughs> After that disc was thrown across, it was kind of amusing because uh, a Night Shift player, well, passed that across, but then a Shocker player just stunned the person after they threw it, kind of like, dang, you know, a little frustration. Hey, that's <laughs> Trippy with the disc in the bubble. It's going to be over to Lucius. Lucius, uh, nice pass along the floor to Trippy. Trippy back to Lucius. Lucius bringing it into the bubble. It's going to be slapped <laughs> back and forth. And, oh, it's Dragoon now with the disc taking a shot. But a beautiful save by True and sent out towards the left side, but not out. Yeah, uh, excellently, <clears throat> excellently done on the defensive end. There's solid working. You really don't want to fall behind by two uh, early here if you can at all avoid it. Uh, but Trippy, they're on the back end, just kind of on their own, waiting for that, and will be rewarded as they move up here. That's an open goal. Looking for three. Three will be acquired. Lucius with the three. Two score lead now for the Shockers. And what a pretty shot it was. 19 meters per second. 
Well, I would have to say they probably have a CV1 because I don't know if a quest can do that. But out of the tubes, it is Night Shift. And True has that disc with a stack partner. Nice pass over to Genix. And a pass all the way into the bubble. There's nobody there. And it's going to be grabbed by Pure Cosmo. But no, stolen away. No, Lucius gets it back. Sends it out through the right tunnel. Back into the blue zone. And they're able to recover it. It's Lucius taking that shot. As, what? Oh, what a bounce off the backboard. And in to the goal. Shockers are now up by eight. What a shocker. That, that was, <laughs> whether that was an intended shot or even a pass, uh, you got to be good to be lucky and you got to be lucky to be good. And Shockers clearly rolling in both at the moment. They've got themselves an 8-0 lead and we are barely three minutes into this one. Night Shift moving it around, doing a decent job here with the rollout, trying to find some spaces. True going to send this one across. Got Jinx. Jinx going to send it across back to True. Some good disc movement here from Night Shift. Best chance they've had here so far. True. Oh, you got to take that one in. Had the chance. Is going to look to reset this, but not going to connect. The stuns coming in. What excellent stuns from Cosmo. And now Shocker is back on the offensive. Is it Jinx or Genix? I, I'm not sure. But you know what? It's a shot by Dragoon Paladin. So, hey, it's 10 points. And the Shockers are way in the lead here. We have six minutes remaining. Offbeat, is it Jinx or Genix? Uh, I've always cast it as Jinx. I know I've mentioned that name a couple of times. But, hey, if anyone in the chat wants to correct me and clear it up, uh, by all means, uh, feel free. As uh, true... Coming up here, trying to bait out that stack. Does bait out the stack, able to get it up to Octothorpe. Octothorpe up to DJ. DJ moving in with some space. Uh, gonna get up to Bowtie. Looking for that pressure from behind, but it's not coming. Looks for the long three. Uh, that's a little ambitious and will be stopped and uh, force Night Shift to, to set this up to try again. Okay, well, Twitch chat says it's Jinx, so we're going to say That's Jinx. And it is Lucius with the disc at the moment, however. Going to send it out through the right tunnel. I see the stacks are forming, and here comes Dragoon Paladin looking for that shot, taking the shot. Oh, but a little low. And it's going to be grabbed and cleared out by Jinx up toward that right area. However, Pure Cosmo is there. He's going to send it right back and over to Lucius. Lucius approaching the bubble pass to Trippy. Trippy over to Lucius. And in the goal, the Shockers are up by 12 launchers. points. And we're about halfway through this wow. round. Yep, uh, Lucius, that is a name we have said a lot here so far this round. Uh, doing an excellent job of lighting up that scoreboard. Very reminiscent of uh, A uh, in in the last game of, on those couple of runs. As uh, True with the disc here with Scorpion, uh, the two of them, you know, we've always seen them try and bait out the stack here uh, to see if they can't, you know, get a stun on them as they get rid of the disc. As uh, they will, the stack comes and they do get it cleared and it works well here. Octothorpe with some space coming in, looking, watch out for that backstab because here comes that backstab, <laughs> stabbing them up like a porcupine, getting this one turned over. But not out. Jinx with the disc looking back the other way here. There's a chance. Watch out for that back stack. It's here. It's making heads roll as Shockers again putting in that defensive effort. And here is Lucius right there in the bubble. There are no defenders and very calmly just playing with the disc. It's a pass to Perk, Pure Cosmo who gently slams it in the back of the goal. And Shockers are up by 14. Yeah, uh, 14, uh, definitely on pace for the word we dare not speak, uh, but we, we might speak it as we get a little closer. We'll see. 340 on the clock, coming out the tunnel here. Night Shift, they've had some good rollouts. Like, they had some very good promising stuff here, uh, but not able to capitalize on the other end. And really, it's been that offensive backstack getting in and just taking them by surprise, getting back, getting the stuns, getting turnovers, and turning into quick opportunities the other way. Now that they're set up here and there's no backstacks coming in, we'll see if it results in something. It does! True! Get some points on the board for Night Shift. Night Shift, finally, with something to show for their efforts. Wow, and yes, they re reduced the uh, lead of Shockers to 12 points. But we're going to see a Shockers offensive joust, something we have not seen this match. Out of the tubes they come. It is Lucius with the disc sending it across to the left. And Dragoon is able to grab it and brings it forward. But, oh, there's a stack coming. Oh, I just gave the disc away. It's going to be grabbed over to Jinx. Jinx is going to send it across. And I've noticed Night Shift has been having a lot of problems with the geometry. The disc 
keeps just being pulled right into the geometry and taking those errant bounces. Lucius is able to grab it in their bubble. Lucius is going to clear it out through the mid. And once again, the stacks are going to be coming quickly. We have a stack in the bubble. We have Dragoon on the wall. Dragoon's taking their time waiting for their players. It's pure Cosmo putting it in for another two watchers. points. And Shockers are once again up by 14 12, 11, points with just 10, over two minutes remaining. Nine. Yeah, a couple of different good pass options there. <clears throat> Four Shockers coming in here. Uh, ended up being Pure Cosmo, the one finding that spot on the shield and able to turn it into points. As, uh, yes, like you said, that lead is extended back here to a 14-point difference, which probably will be enough to win this one with less than two minutes on the clock. And Dragoon gonna get a stun. Looking for a couple more. Gonna try the bounce. Not gonna work, but no worries, because you got a stack coming in. There's Lucius, and Lucius has been money so far. Ding, ding, bottom up, and look at that. Three more points for Lucius. Wow, Lucius has 13 10, points eight, already seven, in the first round. Six, Absolutely five, amazing. Four, but it is a night shift two, offensive one. joust. And out of the tubes they come at disc is grabbed by Jinx. Jinx is going to send it across to the left where, oh, it is not caught bouncing in the trap area. Octo is able to grab it. It sends it all the way across into the zone. But Pure Cosmo is there. It's going to send it right back into the night shift zone. And who gets there first? It is it is Lucius once again. Lucius oh. is bringing it into the bubble. And it's a pass up. Not connected. And True is able to grab it and clear it Blue all the way out. Oh, via way. Scorpion Lance. Yeah, Scorpion with some space. Going to clear this one in. Hope a stack's coming in, but not coming in nearly as fast as that. Shocker's back stack. And oh my goodness, if we have a minute to talk at the break, we are going to talk about that back stack because it's gotten them another couple points, and that's it. That's the round 22 to 2. Shocker's living up to their name here. Wow. I did not expect a mercy at all, but wow, that's all I can say. Uh, yeah, so Night Shift really, like, this Mercy coming in here, it, it's been very interesting this game, uh, because for the most part, for the most part, Shockers have not been massively outplaying Night Shift. There's just the, the one or two things that they've been doing really, really well that Night Shift, Shift just has not found an answer for. Um, that backstack is causing so much trouble, right? You can see that, shock, that Night Shift has adjusted trying to, you know, uh, hold on as long as they can to try and get a stun to give their offense more time in the other end. Uh, but really, so far, that hasn't translated into anything. That back stack is still getting in, still making trouble, uh, causing turnovers. I think right now, you need to be, if you're Night Shift, you got to be prioritizing. Once you get yourself into that zone, look for the reset, right? Uh, we've seen the couple of opportunities where Night Shift has moved in. Uh, and, you know, had all four Shocker players back in the bubble, that's when they've done best. Uh, so I would I would be surprised here uh, if we don't see Night Shift coming out and trying to kind of, you know, slow it down and get themselves some more opportunities that way. Well, I do see that Shockers is down to three players, and they're allowing the joust to happen here. So out of the tubes they come it is night shift with the disc the uh, this might be the opportunity night shift needs it is scorpion lance gonna send it all the way across to tru true true is gonna pass it up to scorpion and oh stolen away by pure cosmo and sent out through the mid not quite as far as they would like but dragoon is able to grab that dragoon's gonna send it in but shield gets in the way and octothorpe is able to pick it off but no dragoon takes it and puts it in anyway Two points Get to your launcher already. Dragoon style in there. We see you in the chat, Lucius. So sorry about your computer. Uh, we'll get you back in here, but it does look like uh, they're doing all right without you here for the time being. Uh, Dragoon putting in a little little solo flare there at the end of that one. Uh, Shockers with the opening lead here right now. And uh, if you are Night Shift, you're looking to take advantage of anything you can. Uh, you really, really want to get on the board with some points here, but that's not going to do it because uh, that is cleared right into the hands of a waiting defender. And it is Dragoon going for that shot, but the shield gets in the way. However, Trippy's right there, gonna grab that disc, looking for that option. A nice little pass over to, oh, the wrong side. True is able to grab that, sends that through to the left. 
tunnel. But here comes Trippy once again. Trippy's going to reset it back to Dragoon. Dragoon sent it through the bottom trench. Over to Lucius. Lucius, oh, I wouldn't want to give that just to Lucius. Lucius is going to put it in the goal. But Lucius is ducking and, oh, not able to hold on to it. And that disc is going to be grabbed by True. True's going to bring that across. Little set back to Scorpion. Scorpion back to True. True's going to send it down to Jinx. Jinx is not sure what that was, but it's going to get knocked out of the bubble by Pure Co and over to Pure Cosmo and cleared out through the mid. But the geometry gets in the way. Did you see that little behind the back flick to get the perfect clear out below the bottom? And oh, it'll turn into two points. It will. Trippy going to get up there and put the finishing touch on this one. Uh, but... Getting down there quick with the stacks, capitalizing on an excellent clear, and uh, finding themselves here now with a with a two score lead. Yes, they are, and it's going to be a night shift offensive joust. And Warpgate, I see in there, typical shield always in the way, but you know what? At least it's not like Nugget where it constantly moves back and forth. It's Lucius going to send that back in to the goal for another three points. And the Shockers are up 12, by seven 11, points. We're about 10, seven and a half five, minutes remaining. Eight, seven, yeah, Lucius six, not missing a beat. Five, Who cares four, about a little disconnect three, here or there? Uh, clearly not five, Lucius. Back in form with a solid three while back in the arena. And uh, Night Shift uh, struggling to find something that works here. They're going to send this one in all the way through. But look who's converging. It's the entirety of the Shockers team. Uh, Dragoon, the one with the disc here, True, just gonna get rid of that, and I don't blame it, like, it's not the right play, but I really can't blame them, because Night Shift has played so much of this game, needing to look over that shoulder for someone always on them sooner than they think, and if you're able to get into a team's mind with that, uh, it can be insane mentally, as Trippy is gonna put this one in for two points, but, you know, just by the fact that you have them looking over their shoulders, they're not able to focus on what they want to execute as a team. Yeah. One disappointment with uh, Lucius having to dis disconnect and their computer crashing is it resets all their stats. So now they only have three points. Uh, oh, well, it is true with the disc on the offensive joust and the pass over to the left. There's nobody there except for the Shockers. Dragoon's going to grab that, send that back across. It's going to be a little free-floating, bouncing disc. Who's there first? It's going to get slapped over to Lucius. Lucius is going to pass it back to Dragoon. Dragoon taking the shot and two more points. Get to your launcher. Dragoon Paladin. Two more points. Bring this up to 11-0. And uh, we are going to see a timeout come in here from Night Shift as we see if they can't. Uh, they're they're going to try and figure something out uh, if they can as uh, <laughs> they, they got to get something going here. And I guess if there's ever a moment to take it, it is now. But 11 points in four minutes. It's hard to believe based on how we've seen this go uh, that there's any like, you know, small shift they could make here that really uh, would turn the tide of this game. Yeah, I don't know. I. I feel like if they were just to calm down a little bit and have a little bit more awareness. Now, I'm I'm the, uh, the pot calling the pedal, kettle black here because I have horrible uh, game awareness in the game. But I have seen players that they just, it's like they have radar inside their headset and they just know where everybody and everything is. And that's what Night Shift needs right now. If they just knew when they were going to get stunned, if maybe the callouts need to be a little bit quicker so they know when to pass it. Yeah, uh, definitely call. There's a couple of different things you can do for there. Callouts are absolutely the biggest one. <clears throat> uh, the problem right now is they, they might be trying to have the red callouts, right? You might be calling when they see something developing. Uh, but with the way, you know, they kind of know what sort of scenarios and getting them to trouble so i think at that point you, you don't call it as soon as they're on as soon as they're you know approaching them and starting to challenge the disc you ch call it out as soon as they've left you right if you're if you're on back on defense and you've been trying to stun on that offensive stack as soon as you know you've missed them you call it then so they know to you know get so, so they know ahead of time uh, that it's something that they're gonna have to deal with uh and you know just getting them you know that extra half second could make a huge difference here uh, well, we're going to find out because the pause is out and it is a night shift offensive joust. It is true with the disc. True's going to send that across. Oh, but not connected. However, or Octo is able to grab that disc, but stolen away by Trippy. Trippy's going to pass it across to Dragoon. Dragoon go for the shot, but off the ding ring. That's all right. Lucius is there on the floor. <laughs> going to go for that shot again. Little too high. 
and it's going to be bouncing around. Blue and with the disc. Octo is able to grab that disc, sends it out through the left tunnel. Here come the stacks of the Shockers. It is Lucius grabbing that disc. Lucius is going to, Lucius is going to send it out through that left tunnel. But there's Scorpion Lands grabbing it, sending it right back over to True. True takes the shot. Three points. And Night Shift is on the board. Yep. We're at the midway point. It took it all the way till there. But hey. Points are points as true. <clears throat> Does an excellent job of putting this one in. Uh, we did see Dragoon try to attempt an over the over the head backward shot here. Uh, so uh, Shockers uh, looking to try some some uh, weird shenanigans as this game goes on. Uh, but you know. If it, if it makes it a closer game, eh, what the heck. But they're moving in here. Uh, Trippy with the opportunity, could have tucked that in. Is going to decide to take it back. Looking for Lucius. Lucius will get stunned out as the defense comes back. True gets the slap and gets it out. Uh, but there's no one there. So the Shockers have all the time in the world to recover and move in again. It is over to Trippy. Trippy loses the disc on the geometry. And it's just floating. It, 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 I almost like no one realizes that disc was free and took several seconds before people chased it down. It's Lucius has it, but stolen season. away. It's Jinx, Jinx with the Clear disc and send it through yourself. that right tunnel. And once again, the stacks are forming, but it doesn't matter. Pure Cosmo is there. Pure Cosmo is going to send that through the mid. Up and over. Here come the stacks for Shockers. Lucius takes a shot, but True sends it and sends it right back out. But Lucius once again has the disc. Going to be passed over, but not caught. And it's grabbed by Scorpion Lance. Going to send that out through the left tunnel. Yeah, out, and they've got a couple of stunts, so if they can get it, something going here, they've got a shot, there's an open three, looking for it, not going to connect, but no worries, Octo is there for the rebound, Octo going to put it in with the stack, closing in close behind, uh, but we'll get it in, back-to-back -back scores for Night Shift, and hey, uh, you take what you can get at this point, and hey, a couple of scores, nothing to sneeze at, especially considering uh, how tough points have been to come by uh, so far this game. And you know what? Night Shift only needs to score twice. Two three-pointers ties this game up. However, Dragoon Paladin has that disc going to send across through the left tunnel. And the stacks are coming out. However, True grabs it, sends it right back. You're going to get stuck in that trap area. You, you have to hate that trap area where those, that disc just gets caught up. And it's hard to get it out of there. It's going to be over by the orange bubble where True is right there. A little pass, but the geometry gets in the way. That disc is going to be floating free in that upper trench area. Scorpion is able to grab it, sends it back down toward the trap. Oh, toward the bubble, but picked off by Trippy, sent through that left tunnel. And Dragoon has it. Dragoon's going for that long three-point shot, but oh, it's going to go right behind the goal and bounce out of the bubble. Yeah, no stacks on the other side, ready to reclaim that for the Shockers. <clears throat> Does end up back in the hands of Jinx, who's able to move this in. And here come all of Night Shift, but they're not able to get it to the disc, because Scorpion does get stunned out there, and gives some space for Lucius to can move this one back and get it up to the midfield. Good hustle back from Octo will mean that Night Shift holds on to possession. They've cleared it into the bubble. Lucius there, where's the pressure coming? Lucius misjudges it, could be a chance here. Just kind of blindly throwing that one back, and unfortunately, no teammate in the area. Means Pure Cosmo gonna be able to scoop this one up, Set it to Lucius, and Lucius going to take some time. Look for that perfect clear. Orange clears and it out, of out zone. through the left tunnel. And once again, here come the stacks. It is pure Cosmo. Pure Cosmo is going to send it into the bubble, but not in the goal. It's going to bounce right back out. It's trippy with the district. We're trying to bring it back in. A bounce off the pyramid in the goal. And Shockers is now up by eight points. And we have a minute and a half remaining. Yeah, minute 30 left on this one, and that one will basically seal it as uh, Shockers with that eight-point lead now, which is going to be about surmountable with only the minute 15 left on the clock. Uh, slow coming out the tunnel here, and that will be costly as in comes that stack firing at full speed, uh, able to cause a loose disc. The Night Shift will still get it back and be able to clear, but needing to clear in such a hurry, they don't really have anyone in position to chase it down. Uh, sense it right, looking for that dribble. We'll get it all the way through, pass all defenders. Trippy with it, gonna get the shield, spinning around, looking for the shot. Not gonna connect defense, because back in time, Octothorpe with the disc, Octothorpe with the clear. And here are the night shift stacks. It's going to be a nice toss by Jinx and over to True and in the back of the goal. Reducing that lead, but it just might be too little, too late. Yep, but hey, it's a nice, uh, much more respectable scoreline. You know, absolutely huge, huge improvement round over round from Night Shift. 
you know, it's always hard to come back from a, a blowout like this with a 22 to 2. As uh, 20 seconds left on the clock here to see if we can't get one more score. Coming in, Octothorpe is going to read that, get a piece of it, get the steal. Looking for Jinx, or is going to send below Jinx, and oh, uh, rough call, because Pure Cosmo gets the steal. No, not all the way out. True, going to hold this one in, send in seven seconds on the clock, but that... Backstack, they're gonna put in for an own two pointer, and 13 to 9 is gonna be the final scoreline here at the end of round two as Shockers taking it in two rounds. Absolutely incredible play by Shockers. I'm not sure if I agree with that self goal at the end. It really didn't change anything, it wouldn't have changed anything, but hey, you know what? The round is over, the match is over, and Shockers have won. Yeah. That they have all around fairly dominant performance here. We can see them taking a little bit easier in the second round. Uh, but Shockers, uh, look, looking very, very strong here. Uh, wouldn't be at all surprised to see if we see them, you know, uh, bumping up in the ranks over over the next, you know, week or two as they get some more games under the belt. And we're about hitting the point uh, as things kind of, you know, start to settle as far as MMR goes. We get, we get a lot uh, more closer games as teams kind of get to, you know, uh, where they should be and where we expect them to be. Absolutely. But hey, we have one more match tonight. We have T2T versus the Echo Holics. And that's going to be coming up in about five minutes. So stay tuned. I'm Pinch Nerve, and I'm here with Offbeat that has been doing an incredible job, not only casting, but also with the cameras. We'll be back in just, just a couple minutes.
Good evening and welcome back to the VR Master League. As promised, we are back. And as promised, we have another incredible match. A kind of an exclamation point on the wonderful matches we've already had. We have T2, T on orange, and Echo Holix on blue. Offbeat, can you tell us about these teams, please? <clears throat> Look, these, these are teams made up of a lot, a lot of players um, who, who have been around the community for a while, <clears throat> who are kind of, you know, big names, uh, both like in that, you know, you've seen them around and also that they're, 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 uh, they're great members of the community and have been super involved from the time being. Uh, a lot of them you may know if you kind of follow the, uh, the yeah, beer league show that where they they'll come and they'll do these late Friday night games uh, in the arena right now. Actually, can I? Uh, you can't see it at the moment because I can't show you live. But they're all they're all doing a little cheers around the nest as a little pregame ritual. Uh, pretty fortu fortuitous that they've been uh, matched up here as you know a lot of friends on both sides. Uh, should be a good, clean, fun game. Blue team, absolutely. And you know what? I apologize. I forgot to wow. introduce us. In. I am Pinch Nerve, and I'm here with Offbeat, 12, the production 11. lead. The caster, the camera person, the legend, offbeat 85. And now we're going to have that neutral joust. We are indeed uh, T2T. Uh, Pinch, you were telling me before the stream, what does that stand for, for others who uh, might not be in the know? That stands for that team over there. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, that team over there is going to get the clear here as we're looking for these first points here. Uh, now 20 seconds in, it is going to be coming into the bubble with a chance. Zori going to grab that one, gets a piece of it up high. And Zori means that team over there is going to be the ones with the opening score here, up 2-0. And in only 20 seconds. However, we're going to have an Equaholics offensive joust. And wow, hello, Newton Dad. Good seeing you here. And out of the tubes, it is the Echoholics. It is Abchu with the disc going to send it across to the left to Sir Captain Spoon over to Smooth Riding. Smooth Riding's going to bring it into the bubble, looking for that cross, but no, intercepted by Arrow Knight and sent back. However, Abchu is there. Abchu bringing it from the top over to Smooth Riding and in the back of the goal, tying up this game. Yeah, nice little pickup there. <clears throat> Stopping the turnover, getting it back in the offensive zone and wasting no time capitalizing on it. Some good movement from Smooth riding there uh, to find that open space because it was cluttered in behind that goal, but doing an excellent job of opening it up, finding the space, getting away from the defender, and uh, then at the end of it all, rewarded with two points as Arrow Knight now with the disc, sending it down below, moving it quick back the other way. That team over there, not to be denied. <laughs> Where we may be in for a high-scoring game here. Four two now 11, what 10, a beautiful nine, shot by Paranem to seven, get that two six, point five, advantage however four, we're going to have another three, Echo Holix offensive joust and out of the tubes they come it's going to be grabbed by Abchu and once again underway. hanging out by that nest just taking their time it's going to be a nice pass Blue over to the right there, where Sir Captain Spoon's going to take it and it relay it across over to ooh nobody is there however Smooth Riding is able to pop up grab that disc pack, pass it across but Paranime intercepts it and sends it back through the mid ooh and the stacks are there for Sir Captain Spoon to grab it and going to send it ooh a little bounce off the wall there Smooth Riding is able to recover it, but bumps it right into the geometry again. Going to send it across, but picked off by Eastend and sent back into the blue zone. Yeah, look, these teams kind of reading each other. These are players <clears throat> that have played together for a while. They kind of know each other's tendencies and moves as they are kind of predicting each other back and forth here. Still with this tight two-point uh, two score line here as uh, Echoholics able to get it, but they're not able to get all the way through. Geo getting in the way there. Fortunate bounce is going to mean it's up in the sky trap here. Or... Rather, Sky Trench here for Smooth Ride and moving in with AB2. Gonna send that over to AB. AB getting away from the goal. He has to just miss timing that one. And AB2 rewarded. We're locked up at fours. Wow. I have to wonder if this whole game is gonna be, you know, just a pendulum swinging, swinging back and forth with a tie. Two points tie. Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out because, you know, here we go. A T to T offensive joust. It is he sent with that disc. 
He said he's going to send it across to the right. There's nobody in the tunnel. However, there is somebody waiting. Oh, but not able to grab the disc. Somebody gets stunned. It's Paranim who does grab the disc. Paranim's going to send it into the bubble, but no one there. Going to be slapped back by Arrow Knight, but once again, out of the bubble. Paranim backing up. Going to reset that all the way to Isen. Isen slowing it down, creeping up. No, just waiting for a lane. Waiting, and it's going to be a pass over to Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight on that floor area, going to send it to the to the goal, but nice save and sent back out. But Paranim is able to grab the disc once again. Nice pass down to Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight coming in over to Zori. Zori's going to reset it back over to Paranim once again. Paranim sends it down to Arrow Knight, takes the shot, two points, and T2T is up by two. A couple solid minutes of possession there, <clears throat> looking for just the right opportunity. Had one or two that didn't quite collect or connect, uh, but no worries because on the back end there, uh, that team over there doing an excellent, excellent job of uh, staying in possession this, making sure they always have that recent option, someone to collect on the back line and are rewarded for it. They've got the lead back here, but here come the Echoholics, some good quick disc movement. Just going to slip up on the last one. Smooth Ride, unfortunate to still have some space, is able to collect, gets this over, Captain Spoon with some room, with the goal! Back up at six! Get to your launcher. <laughs> and we do have a tie game once again. Six to six with under six minutes remaining. All right, well, a lot closer to five minutes, but I just wanted to say that the extra six. It is a T2T offensive joust. Out of the tubes they come. It is Isen with the disc and to send it over to the left where Zori is going to relay it all the way across to Paranim. Paranim coming into the bubble, taking the shot, two points. And that team over there is up by two once again. Wow, very, very nice rollout here, getting to Paranim at the end of it, but what uh, what an excellent, some long, long cross-court passes that we saw coming in there, and does result in those points at the end of it with a nice little duck from Paranim, as back the other way, Echoholics looking to see if they can answer back, as you know, that, that two-point lead keeps opening and closing, Rakara with the disc now, and with some space, got an open target behind the goal, but no, not going to be able to connect the smooth, but no worries, Rakara just wanted the disc back, open pass, looking for AB2, not going to connect. Uh, and there are the stacks. It looks like it should be a TTOT chance. And they will have it. Paranim slowing it down. Looking for an open target. And they will be able to control this one and set up an offense. And it is going to be cleared out through that left tunnel. Thank you for the hydrate, Ennard. We definitely need it. It's Zori behind the goal. Putting it in. And now a four-point lead. It's no longer one score difference. Now the Echoholics. Have to work Seven, for it. Six, yummy, well, it, yummy. <laughs> if you know the alcoholics, yeah, they don't want to work for it. Hey, out of the tubes, it is. Abchu going to send that over to the right. And it is caught by Sir Captain Spoon. Going to send it right back to Abchu. And down to Smooth Riding. Smooth Riding's going to pass that across to Sir Captain Spoon. And in the goal. And now it's Get just a two-point difference again. Yeah, <clears throat> was going to say that, you know, this is the biggest lead we've seen here the whole game. Uh, but as is, uh, clearly, that not going to last long if Echoholics had anything to say about it. Because we're back to only a two-point lead here as that team over there now with the disc looking. Going to get this past Captain Spoon. But Captain Spoon does enough to kind of force an off pass there and is able to collect this one and has some teammates coming in, zooming in, looking for Smooth on that back line. But Zori... Uh, causing some trouble with Arrow Knight and causes that, you know, clear not to be as accurate as they would like. And now a chance coming in. Essen with the disc here looking, not going to connect. Uh, and will be floating loose here where Zori will pick it up. Zori looking for the reset. Uh, it's a little awkward, but it gets there. And it is over to Paranim. Paranim's going to send that up and over where Arrow Knight's going to grab it. Going to pass it across to Zori, but not caught. Arrow Knight slaps it back down, but picked off by Ab Chu. Ab Chu's going to send it over across to the left where Ooh, Sir Captain Spoon's going to forward down, it through dude. the mid, but the geometry's in the way. Smooth Riding is able to recover. It goes for that mail slot, but Nest is in the way. Ye ye geometry oh, plays no favorites. Brakara is over that disc, not going to grab it. It's Ab Chu. And a nice pass into the geometry, but Smooth Riding is going to just smooth his way right into the disc, grabs it, and a pass to Ab Chu into the back of the goal. And once again, we have a tie game. 
Uh, yeah, we do have a tie game. Um, <laughs> two score lead evaporating very, 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 very quickly. As here we are out the tunnel now after giving up back to back scores. It's that team over there, Essen with a disc, gonna make a duck under the incoming uh, pressure. Gets that up to Paranum. Paranum with some space. And because that was just a solo coming in, Sir Captain Spoon, Captain Spoon has to work and just, you know, kind of float all the way back down. But hey! Uh, <laughs> is gonna have to turn right back around the other way because Smooth is gonna get the turnover here and get this sent in, but no real pressure coming in there. As you know, a lot of the Echoholics were stunned out there and that team over there does buy themselves some space and get it cleared into the Echoholic zone. And it is Sir Captain Spoon. Gonna send that all the way across the mid. It's in the bubble, but it's gonna bounce right back out. Who's there? It is Brakara. Brakara gonna send it over to Abchu. Abchu to Smooth Riding. GFS, get fun smooth. Wow, excellent, excellent <clears throat> movement there. Three scores in a row from the Echoholics. Uh, suddenly, suddenly that team over there under pressure. Um, and here we go. Time to see if they can get it because we got time for one more score, really. And the first pass won't connect. Fortunately, there is Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight going to get this down. Looking for Paranin, but a bit of a disconnect there. And uh, AB2 is going to pick this one up. Looking for the clear. Not going to get out. So potentially chance here. Depends who gets this disc first. It is Captain Spoon. Captain Spoon making some moves. Is going to get the clear. 16 seconds left as time running out for TTOT. And it is over to Zori. Zori into that right tunnel. Who has it? It's nobody's disc. It's going to be chased down by Essen. Essen bringing it forward. Nice pass across to Aaron. And the goal. Three points. And T2T has taken the first round by one point. How did they manage that? What a finish. I thought that was done once we got that initial clear, but wow, spinning around to get that, not just to get the shot, but to get it as a three, flinging it backwards behind the back. Oh my goodness. Uh, Beer League, thank you so much for sending us your best because my goodness, uh, we are in for a treat here. That was one round. I can almost guarantee that we have two more to go. Uh, buckle up, everyone. <laughs> Lots of echoes still to come here. You know, and I can just imagine what it's like in that area, that back area for the Echoholics right now. They're probably stunned with, how did we lose that? We, how, how did that happen? I know I would be because <laughs> that just blew me away. You know, I'm looking at the stats here. Paranim with seven points. Clearly the leader here. Uh, everyone for T to T with assists on the Echoholic side. Everyone except for Berkera having four points. You know, these are well-made wow. teams. These are fun teams. It's hilarious that you say well-made teams because <clears throat> as if they, you know, kind of got here before a game and figured, okay, okay, how can we balance these teams to give us, you know, a nice, fun, exciting match for everyone? Because it does seem like that, what, that's what's been done, right? But here we are with an official VRML match uh, with a bunch of players that are all friends coming out here and uh, just showing up to put on a show, Arrow Knight. Uh, we know Arrow Knight has the shots uh, coming in here and starting things off with a bang as TTOT with the three. Only like seven seconds in. Absolutely amazing. But it is a Echoholics offensive joust out of the tubes. It is Abchu with the disc. Abchu in no hurry. Going to send it to the right, but picked off by Paranim. Paranim taking the long shot into the bubble. It's not a shot. It was just sent into the bubble. Ascent is going to grab it, put it in the goal for another two points. And now that other team is up by five. Yeah, uh, clearly, clearly <clears throat> disappointed at having dropped that first round, looking to come out here and say, okay, no more fun in games. This means war. We are going to light up that scoreboard, and what are you going to do to stop us? <clears throat> so far, nothing. AB2 getting this one out past the stack. This is going to move it to Smooth, but oh my goodness, Smooth gets obliterated by an incoming Zori. Zori gets the stun, gets the steal, gets the clear, and oh, what? <laughs> what was that bounce as it gets lost in Trap and Paranim has to slow it down? And over to Aronite. Aronite's going to send it across, but not connected. 
However, it's going to get slapped across to <gasps> Arrow Knight for another two points. Get to your and T2T T is up by seven points what? already. What was that pass? Getting just slapped across off the off the bottom, uh, up to the shield. Excellent, excellent job. And yeah, biggest scoreline, biggest lead we have seen here so far as uh, that team over there putting in some solid, solid early work here and have earned themselves a 7-0 lead. Uh, not all surprised to see AB2 trying to slow it down. A lot of pressure coming in from TTOT. Is it enough though? Oh, Captain Smooth just missing that long three. That was open. It was a golden opportunity. Oh, but that clear attempt does not work out. The wall gets in the way. Bracara is able to send her across into the bubble, but the stacks for a T2 to the air, and Arrow Knight's going to send it all the way out through that right bubble. However, here come the stacks. Not quite to the disc. Who gets it first? It is Zori. Zori's going to bounce around. Oh, over to Essen and take the shot. Two points, and T2T is up by nine points. Points 12, already. 11, We're only 10, less than three minutes nine, into the game. Eight, seven, <laughs> yeah, uh, three five, three minutes in, four, three minutes in, three, and uh, nine point lead already. Uh, clearly, three rounds is much much more important uh, to everyone here. Than, than making sure we have close rounds. AB2 coming in here, they get past everyone, uh, but watch out for that back stack as they do. Bracara with the disc, gonna get this to Captain Spoon. Captain Spoon looking across, is gonna connect here. That's Smooth Raiden with the disc, Smooth Raiden moving, and look at the bounce, not gonna connect. And there's no one there to scoop up that rebound, which means this will be nice, easy collect for Zori. And Zori gonna get the clear. And it's gonna clear all the way through. Oh, and Zori's able to grab it, sends it across, but a save by Bracara. Gonna send that back out of the bubble. Oh, not all the way. Arrow Knight grabs it. It's gonna be a little competition back and forth where Kara is finally able to send that out but Essen is there gonna send it right back through Arrow Knight and oh misses that sharp angle but does get the disc back gonna bring it in and another save <laughs> knocked out and you know what Newton dad you've got it come on alcoholics time out and think or drink whatever it takes it's gonna be Paranam sending it back in to the alcoholic zone yeah, sent in all around the back of the bubble, and the stack comes in there. Zori with an open shot, and Zori will hit that. It's an off angle, but when there's no goalie in the goal, that's an easy enough one to finish, and that lead up to 11 low, and clearly having the stream on in their ears, because in comes the timeout here uh, from uh, coming in from Echoholics as they look uh, to put this round back together if they can. But the real question is, now that they've called the timeout, are they thinking about things or are they drinking about things? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They are the alcoholics. Uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> can you redeem a hydrate for the teams? Absolutely, Breeze. Uh, we can't do anything here, but we will uh, We will make sure that we, uh, if they're listening to the stream, we will make sure we, we get that sent over to them. Here comes the hydrate, and I promise you we will not drink any water for that one. Uh, so yeah, okay. So let's look at the game here. Obviously, six minutes here. Uh, on the clock left, 11 points in six minutes. That is definitely uh, not insurmountable. But the way things have been trending right now, it does seem uh, like that team over there does seem to have most of the most of the momentum coming in here. Which do you do you think it's just you know a trend? You know, just kind of the way things have been steamrolling here, or do you think they've actually found something uh, that they can exploit within Echoholics that's going to be hard to tighten up? Honestly, I think they found something to exploit. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's it just over and over. It, it, it's inexplainable to me. I, I know the Echoholics. I know how they play. And I've never seen a team just walk over them so harshly. <laughs> Well, and especially not after what was, by all accounts, as close of a round as you can get. So, setting up here, we're getting back into it, into the tunnels. Uh, let's see what they've got up their sleeves, because they've got the disc. Question is, what will they do with it? My money is on throwing it. <laughs> the joust it is. M2 sending it to the right to Sir Captain Spoon. A relay over to Bracara, but oh, stunned out. And it's Zori going to grab that over to Arrow Knight. And ooh, another stun. But Zori's able to grab it back, sends it into the Echoholic Zone, into and back out of the bubble. Ooh, Who grabs best. it first? It is going to be, ooh, it's going to be a turnover. Arrow Knight takes a shot, but off the ding ring. 
Zori is there, gonna pass it up over to Paranem. Paranem's gonna bring it back to Aeronite. Aeronite sending it back to Paranem. Paranem coming in for that low shot for another two points. And T2T is up by 13. Yeah, Echoholics kind of came out here. They were doing pretty well <clears throat> on that rollout, got themselves into a good position, but weren't able to capitalize. And ever since that initial rollout, it really was uh, just that team over there coming in and, you know, making their mark felt here. As uh, AB2 coming out now with that disc, looking to see if they can't piece something together, uh, putting some effort into trying to light up that stack. Uh, they do so for a moment, but it doesn't last. How did... How did Sir Captain Spoon manage to get that disc in the cloud of TTOT players? Uh, very fortunate here as Echoholics holding on to this disc, trying to see if they can't push for another chance. They might have a chance here coming in. There's no open target. Arrow Knight had bounced, and Captain Spoon puts that one in. Finally, Echoholics on the board. They are, but they're still down by 10 points. We have just over four minutes remaining. You know, watching the passes by the Echoholics, I saw a lot of almost passes that they were able to grab in the end but you, you get, you, this t to t team is too good you're gonna have to make those clean passes it looks like it's Isen was able to stun out sir captain spoon gonna send that over to the right to arrow knight arrow knight gonna fake a few passes finally does send it into the bubble not in the goal however paranim is there backing it out just a bit gonna be a shot up and over the goal and slapped out of the, the bubble way. into the mid. Yeah, Echoholics with a chance here moving in, looking for that three. Oh my goodness! From half court, AB2 and Echoholics are not out of this yet. Turns out the solution was just hit a lot of long threes and will be fine. <laughs> Breeze and clip it like wow. Wow, uh, Echoholics, they're back. They found their mojo. They certainly did via USPS Priority Mail. And it is Arrow Knight now in the Echoholics zone, bringing it into the bubble, looking for that shot, making the shot, and up by nine, just like that. Yeah, exactly what with TTOT needed if they wanted to, you know, kind of hold on to that and make sure that this didn't slip away too quick because Echoholics starting to claw back some momentum there. Uh, will be stopped here uh, for the time being as we hit under three minutes left on the clock and with a nine point lead restored, things looking a lot simpler for TTOT, but Sir Captain Spoon somehow getting that uh, out despite being outnumbered. We've seen a couple uh, come in from Captain Spoon along those lines. Captain Spoon making moves, moving in, got some open targets, not able to hit Bracara though, and this is gonna bounce all the way out. Paranim closest to the disc, gonna be able to scoop this one up and get it cleared. And all the way into the blue bubble, right back out. Gonna bounce along that ceiling area. Who's there first? It is Zori taking the three point shot, making the three point shot. And T to T is now up by 12 points. Wow, this is an amazing team. I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing a whole lot more of this T to T team. Very possibly. Look, T2T -T still kind of working through their placement matches. That's why you see the bronze star there on the overlay. Uh, definitely not at all reflective of, you know, where, where these players uh, belong as rankings go, which is why they're up here, you know, playing against, uh, playing against this, uh, what are we ranked at officially? Diamond? Flat? Uh, one of the two. As it is picked up here, Zori with some space. No! Space quickly closed. Captain Spoon with the disc. Minute 30 left on the clock. Nine point difference will be too much, but let's see if we can get some momentum here because they're first there with some space. Goalies are back. Moving in is AB2, and AB2 says, I would like some points, please, and gets two, bringing it back to within 10. And then exactly 10, but we have one minute and 15 seconds remaining. At this point, T2T, all they need to do is just kill the clock and out of the tubes they come it is Essen with that disc gonna send it over to the right where Zori is gonna pass it along to Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight's gonna bring it up slowly at this point there is no hurry there is no need to score it does shoot it into the bubble but it bounces right back out where Zori's gonna send it send it right back to Essen and Essen gonna forward it back over to Zori. Zori just Hanging on to that disc at this point. A nice pass up to Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight shoots it in the goal, extending their lead to 12 points. 
Yeah, this has been the round for that team over there. We are going to see ourselves around three as they uh, put an extra nail in the coffin. That was already uh, very, very definitively airtight. But as is, 16 seconds left. Time to see who gets the uh, moral victory with the last points of the round. That clear is going to go all the way down into the hands of Essen. Essen going to clear it out uh, back into the hands of AB2. AB2 going to put this one back in as back and forth they go with these long clears. Looking to get the dump and chases. Arrow Knight, last hand on the disc isn't enough. It will not be 20 to 8, the final in round two, which means we have set ourselves up. Wait. No. I, I, I kept thinking that Echoholics won round one, but they didn't. Uh, we're, we're done. We're done. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Have you been drinking as well? I can and, neither and, confirm nor deny. Well, as Newton Dad says, clink everyone. Cheers. And it has been a great game. Arrow Knight and um, that team over there. Great game. Echoholics. See, I told you you should have gave me a sticker. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, we're done here. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out and spending some time with us this evening. Uh, don't worry, TTOT believers. Uh, here come your channel points. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, very, very close first round. Uh, and then exploding, exploding out there with that with that, uh, that massive 12-point uh, score line at the end. But all in all, excellent, excellent match. Good to see all these players we know and love back in here, uh, working together, having fun. And it was great to watch and uh, great to be part of both for this game and the other two on the stream here tonight. Yes, it was. And I want to thank you, Offbeat, for not only being a co-caster, but a cameraman doing an incredible job. And I've been pinched nerve. And that is it for tonight. But we will probably be back tomorrow, assuming some matches get scheduled and we can get a casting crew together. And you will get to see much more. VR Master League Echo Arena. Take care, everyone. Season 7 of VRML Echo Arena is brought to you by HyperX, Asterion Products, VR Cover, ProTube VR, Arma.gg, Kiwi Design, Downpour Interactive, and VRWare.net.